What's going on YouTube? Um, I am the Mass Man and I'm here today for another television review. I want to review half, you know, of the first season of the new NBC show Blind Spot, you know, starring um, Sullivan Stapleton as Kurt Weller and Jamie Alexander. Jane Doe slash Taylor Shaw. Um, a lot of you may recognize Jamie Alexander from Thor, but what I remember her for is her role in Jesse in Cow XY. You know, that was a show that if you were a TV fan, you know, was, was possibly, you know, one of the biggest, you know, heartbreaking you know, cancellations of a good television show. If you're in this TV, you know, watching, if you're about that TV life, if you're about TV shows, then uh, good shows getting canceled, you know, comes with the territory. But I think universally people agree that Cal XY was a show that should have got a full run. And uh, she came in, you know, midway through the series and she was, a very strong addition to the show but you know as far as blind spot um i think it's uh one of those shows that have a novel concept and it's it's a outside the box idea that a woman would be given tattoos that are clues to um potential crimes or that are clues to um that would unveil people or organizations that you know are disruptive to the government and honestly this is one of those shows where i wouldn't mind if it got canceled because i think that this show is an R-rated show that was made PG, you know, so it could get on television, so it could get more eyeballs, so it could get more attention, so it could get more viewers. Because the concept of a woman having tattoos that cover her entire body, her entire naked body, and her having amnesia is is kind of ridiculous. It's kind of ridiculous. It, it is is ridiculous, almost to the point of being stupid. So when you do something like that, if you're gonna have a show where a woman has tattoos over every inch of her body, from a from a titty to a to a to a to a vagina to to the to the back of her ass you know the back of her thigh the soles of her feet if she has tattoos all over her body then that's something that you either go got to go all the way with or you don't do it now i heard that this show has decent ratings and it is going to make it but it does seem like a censored version of an R-rated show. It's like if a woman has tattoos all over her body, you know, and she has amnesia, you really have to dig deep into how violated somebody would feel about that. Like you would like you would need to show her like standing naked in front of a mirror like with with her breast tattooed and and all of that you know, the, the the tattoos around the vagina, the tattoos on her ass. You you would have to really go there with it. She would have to you would have to see and experience how violated she felt about all of those tattoos. And it would it would have to have it would it would have to have a creep factor to it and in the show like that like 
the show downplays that and it's one of those things where something that should be a consistent theme throughout the in, at least the entire first season of how violated she feels about having these tattoos on her body is something that's pretty much cleared up in the first two or three episodes. It's like by episode three, she's accepted the fact that she has amnesia and she's accepted the fact that she has tattoos over all of her body. And not only does she have tattoos all over her body, but people are looking at her nude or her naked body, you know, inspecting it. Hundreds of people that she doesn't know, you know, are inspecting her naked body every day of the week. And she's just OK with that now. That's something that that should be a deeply psychological thing that she has to work with and struggle with. And you really don't get that, you know, because you can't do that because you can't have the case where, you know, you know, they have to solve the crime from the tattoo that's right by the, the nipple. You can't do that because it's it's a PG show. And um, another thing is how silly it is that somebody who whom they feel is a is a civilian, how silly it is that not only will she become a part of the investigations, but they'll take her out. And make her a part of the crimes and, and make her, you know, give her a gun and a vest. Let her in in interrogations. You know, I've always hated this, you know, from, you know, you know, these cop shows. It's like there's so many cop shows. Cop shows is cop. Police shows are probably the most popular television show in existence I, I joke that everything is a cop show everything is a show where somebody is arresting somebody or it's about solving you know huge crimes in in an hour in an hour of television but 44 minutes of watch time what I don't like is when they bring in somebody who is not affiliated with the police, but they have such an easy time um, getting in on cases and, and, and fighting case and fighting criminals. It, it's, it's just if you're going to do that because you have to do that, it's like let, let help me suspend disbelief. Help me suspend disbelief. Okay, the girl is okay with the tattoos, you know, in three episodes. All right. I can live with that. I understand this is a, I understand the show is on the network that is on. You can't satisfy, you know, my desire to see this woman naked or, you know, you can't delve into that, that deeply, whatever. But. You know, if, if she's going to be a de facto FBI agent, can we get her signing some kind of release form? Can can we get um, different levels of officials having to sign off like some kind of round table where several people in the organization have to allow her, you know, permission to be out in the field and to carry a weapon. Can we, can we do something about that? I just have a problem with, with, with people being able to do something in television and movies that are so far away from what would happen in reality. It's like, if you're going to have them do something that it's not going to happen in real life, at least explain to me how they're able to do it. 
at least give me a bridge to, you know, to how this is possible, because I'm not an expert on police or police procedures, but I don't think, um, you know, a victim of a crime, however skilled, can just become an unofficial FBI agent endowed with the power to arrest, you know, just pretty much at their own insistence and their own discretion. It's like she got mad at somebody and they let her become an FBI agent. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, but as far as the story goes, it's, it's another one of those shows that have a shadowy organization um, that that they're trying to take down um, the the lead detective um, Bethany Mayfair played by Marie Marianne Jean Baptiste um, is a part of this project um, called Daylight and She's trying to conceal her involvement in this organization, and she's trying to uh, prevent herself from going down and control uh, what's going on with Weller and Jane. So... So far, the show is watchable. The show is decent. The show does seem like it's going to make it. And I will let you know what I think about the entire season when the season is done. I'm up to episode eight. Um, it's it's a watchable show. You can get through it. It's it's if you don't think about it too much, you know, it's fine. You know, um. Kurt Weller, you know, he plays the typical Boy Scout, the consummate, you know, uh, truth, justice in the American way type of character. You know, he's he's a hard ass. Uh, he He's trying to not let his feelings uh, for Jane cloud his judgment. And he's struggling with that. You know, Jamie Alexander. Um, she, she's very good with what she's, she, she does a good job with what she's been given. You know, it's not the best of characters. It's not the best of roles. It's not the best network for this show to be on, but from what she has to work with, she do she does a pretty good job with it. You know, the supporting characters are, you know, they're decent. Like I said, the show is watchable. It's, it's not anything that's spectacular to me. You know, I I don't like it when 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 shows have, you know, huge, um, you know, things that don't make sense about them. But uh, maybe that's something I'm just going to have to get over. I do think that you can have fun with the show and I do think that you can enjoy it. Um, now, I may not want to. I may not care if the show gets canceled or not, but it seems like it's going to make it. And it seems like, you know, people like the show and I do hope the show gets a little creative. I do hope the show gets a little bit more, more, um, intellectual, but for now, you know, I think it's, I think the show is doing what it's trying to do. I think the show is doing exactly what it means to do. Anyway, um, that has been my review of the first half of Blind Spot. Uh, let me know what you think about my review. Do you agree? Do you, do you disagree? Uh, leave that in the description. Uh, like the video, dislike the video, subscribe to my channel. Uh, let me know if there's any other television shows or movies that you would like me to review. Um, anyway, uh, follow me on Twitter at the 
Mr. Mass Man. And that's all I have to say about that. And I will see you in the next video.